fuck! <coughs> Sorry about that. Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. And welcome, folks, to Halloween. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened to my voice there. I've got quite the tale for you this year, folks. Cobra is going to try and summon Great Cthulhu! Well, actually, more like Great Cthulhu's idiot brother. And Cobra wins this time! Um, uh, sort of. Previously on Half the Battle's Halloween Special. Last year, we had a haunted house, eldritch abominations, and furries. In the end, we found out Destro's family worshipped an evil old one in their ancient family home. The Joes ended up burning the place down, thanks to the machinations of the Baroness, who was a woman scorned. I arranged it all! I led the Joe agent here knowing this would be the result! Baroness! B but why? Why? To make you pay for your unfaithfulness with that which you value most. Your ancestral home. And the episode ended on an ominous note. Ah, I hope you never learn what horror your actions may have caused. So, I think it's about time we found out just what exactly was in that pit. Which is why we're looking at the follow-up episode to last year's tale, Sins of Our Fathers. We start the episode where we left off one year ago, in Destro's ruined ancestral home. By the way, by coincidence, it's been a year in both cartoon time and in real life here on this show. Cobra Commander is trying to communicate with the Great Old One by using a laser. Lasers! Is there anything they can't do? The attempt fails, of course, and it's revealed Serpentor just gave the commander the assignment as busy work. Dungeon time! Yeah, in the year between these two episodes, Cobra genetically engineered Serpentor, the Cobra Emperor, as a replacement for the incompetent commander. Ever since then, Cobra Commander has been on again, off again, plotting to get rid of Serpentor. Anyway, back in today's episode, we switch to Dial Tone, sitting in a crummy apartment, being miserable. We find out why in a flashback. The Joes are getting ready to go out and celebrate their re-enlistment. I make no comment about their fashion sense. I will instead just play some music. Before he can leave, though, Flint informs Dialtone that he's being kicked out of the Joes, since he wasn't performing up to their usual standards. What, did he accidentally hit somebody he was actually shooting at? His flashback is interrupted by somebody knocking on his door. Well, I say knocking, it's more immediately barging in by some chick. Rude. She offers him a job designing a communication system. And before you can shout, that's either the Baroness or Zarana in disguise, he's accepted the job and is in Scotland working on Project Cthulhu baiting. Come along, Dialtone. I don't want to see you wasting time with them again. Why is she still calling him Dialtone? I mean, I get that Joe code names are also their nicknames, but she's supposed to be his boss for crying out loud. Anyway, not all is as it seems since we find Flint spying on the operation. It turns out Dialtone getting kicked out of the Joes was just a ruse to get him into Cobra's operation. Even Dialtone didn't know because... If Dialtone knew we wanted him in Cobra's operation, they'd find out. Cobra could have used a voice analyzer to detect the truth. Hmm, a voice analyzer lie detector that's an incredibly useful invention and that's integral to the plot of the episode. As such, it will never, ever be mentioned again in any future episode. 
What, did I accidentally start to review Star Trek Voyager? It seems there's something rotten in the state of, um, Scotland. As Cobra intercepts Flint's transmission, and the poor sod is immediately captured. By the way, this is the second Halloween in a row where Flint has been stalking a fellow team member and followed them halfway across the globe. Dude has issues. Thanks to technology borrowed from Ghostface of the Scream series, Cobra can impersonate Flint, so it will seem that everything remains normal at the site. But my televisors have cooked up a little device that... Modulates my voice. I'll make all your scheduled reports, Flint, darling, only I'll report nothing but failure. When they try the ruse, though, the Joes are one step ahead of them. They've got their own voice analyzer, and figure out it's Serana making the call. Once again, this incredibly useful technology should be standard security equipment. So naturally, it's never ever mentioned again. Anyway, the Joes mount an assault slash rescue operation. Meanwhile, Dial Tone has made the necessary adjustments to the communication laser. Yeah, I still don't get that a laser, what the hell. Anyway, it works! No, you disturb me with no offering! Having successfully called Cthulhu, Cobra Commander lays out his plan. I seek a boon, O oh ancient and mighty one. I offer a pact for all eternity. Destroy a man for me, a single man, and I promise sacrifices for you are dreamt of in all your centuries of sleep. Dude, do you really think that you can bargain with a great old one? <sighs> all right, agreed. But who is this single man that you fear so much? The one known as... Apparently you can. That's sort of weak for a great old god. But you know what, never mind. At least we finally get to see the monster in all its glory. Um, there's something not quite right here. Because the last time we saw that monster, it looked like this. A farting eyeball with tentacles. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm happy it doesn't look like that anymore, it's just weird. Also, if they're continuing this Cthulhu homage, the thing should really have tentacles, and lots of them. Or maybe I've been watching too many Japanese cartoons. Anyway, the Joes arrive just in time to see not-so-great Cthulhu emerge. They engage, but their weapons are ineffective, as the creature just heals from its wounds in moments. Also, its blood is glowing blue color because, well, it's an 80s cartoon. Dialtone finds Flint, and the Joes beat a hasty retreat. I'm with them on this one! I'd be running away too! If for no other reason than to change my pants! General Hawk decides to warn Serpentor the creature is coming, since an eldritch horror from beyond the universe seems to be the sort of thing you'd put your differences aside over so you can fight it together. Serpentor is skeptical, though, since usually Cobra Commander is so incompetent he couldn't summon body odor at a Star Trek convention. But he has to face facts when the monster shows up. What? Impossible! Cobra Commander actually succeeded? I know, right? This is a first for the series! Cobra Commander has a plan that actually works! I mean, that's like Charlie Brown actually kicking the football. Serpentor launches the full military might of Cobra, but their weapons are equally ineffective. Though I should point out we now know that Cobra troops can hit their target, um, just as long as it's slow-moving and the size of an office building. Cobra Commander's plan works, and 
people can actually hit what they're aiming at. This is what Lovecraft meant, folks, when he said that madness would follow when the old gods returned. Repent! Repent! The end is here! Anyway... The Joes are on the way, and Dial Tone gets a present. What's this? Your uniform! Welcome back, Dial Tone, and thanks for the job well done! Job well done? He summoned an unkillable ancient creature of horror that will devour all of mankind. That's a job well done? What the hell does a Joe have to do to get a medal? Napalm the orphanage and puppy store district of a city? I'm gonna need more shock treatments. What does it want? Okay, so a giant rampaging monster is screaming your name and you are unclear about its intentions? DNA from all the greatest leaders in history being put to good use there, Serpy. And you know, it's sad. I mean, maybe Serpentor could have just talked to Cobra Commander. You know, get his point of view, work out their differences. Then maybe he could have gotten the Commander to call off Cthulhu. Why yes, I did just go to that horrible length for such a horrible pun. You're welcome! The creature easily overcomes all of Cobra's defenses, causing Serpentor to make a decision. Then I must lure the creature away from the Terror Drone in order to save Cobra! That's actually an awesome character moment, and is one of the things that separates him from Cobra's old leader, the Commander. The Joes arrive on the scene and are contacted by Destro. He says his family used an ancient chant to lure the creature, and they might be able to get the creature into the ocean with it. Since nothing else has worked, the Joes figure, why the hell not, and record Destro's chant. Well, that certainly isn't Naglui Glonatha Cthulhu Rilie Wagnago Vertagen. Hell, it's not even Clato Barata Nicto. But it is Destro's voice, just recorded backwards. Here's what it's actually saying. Anybody listening to this backwards for a secret occult message is a real dweeb. That's a pretty good burn to anybody who was ever convinced rock albums could summon the devil. So, as Serpentor bravely faces the monster, and I'm not even being sarcastic when I say that, the Joes show up to lure the beast. Serpentor draws his own conclusions, though. What? The Joes are behind this after all? They shall pay with their lives! And you know what? I can't really blame the guy. I mean, G.I. Joe has been fighting him all his life. This also conveniently gets Cobra Commander off the hook, since Serpentor would have probably turned him into paste otherwise. So the monster follows the giant speaker into a deep sea trench, and the Joes drop like all the bombs on him. He gets buried under a ton of rubble. With most of their ammo and fuel gone, and with them being under attack by some very pissed off Cobras, the Joes beat a hasty retreat. This leads to just about Cobra's only military victory in the history of the cartoon series. Like last year, the episode ends on an ominous note with a shot of the ocean floor and bubbles coming out of it. Does this mean the creature could come back? Nope, because it's never referenced again. And that was Sins of Our Fathers, or G.I. Joe Does Lovecraft. Again. Here are my thoughts. Overall, this was a great episode that threw some nice curveballs. Cobra Commander came up with a plan that actually worked, and Cobra won in the end. 
Hell, even Cobra Commander himself didn't really lose, since he didn't get blamed for sending a demon of nightmares after his boss. Speaking of which, I really liked Serpentor in the episode. Usually, he's just the angry guy who yells, THIS I COMMAND! But here, he's depicted as a competent leader that actually seems to care about the organization he's in charge of. Plus, he's definitely not a coward when facing the creature. And while the monster looked nothing like the eyeball tentacle thing from a year ago, it's easy to see why they changed it, since that thing was about as intimidating as a stuffed Pokémon toy. So, I'm happy to overlook the plot hole. Especially since no farting was involved this time. And despite what I said earlier, it did still have some tentacles. They just didn't look very tentacly. Now, the ultimate solution seems a little too simple, Calling the creature with the giant speaker, it does seem like an invincible eldritch abomination got defeated by essentially going like this. Look at the keys! Come on, boy! Look at the keys! Come here! Come here! But I can overlook that as well, since the thing was probably mystically bound to those chants. And hey, I'd like to see anybody else come up with a plan to stop a great old one. There was one major flaw with the episode, though. General Hawk's plan. He wants to know what Cobra is up to in Scotland, so he fires Dialtone, hoping Cobra will recruit him, so he can send Flint to spy on him and get answers. Yeah, here's the problem. He should already know everything that's going on! They know Cobra is screwing around in the ruins of Destro's ancestral home. And they know what happened there last year. And they know there's a monster down there. At that point, they should have just called in an airstrike and things would have been taken care of. Instead, they sent the one guy on the team, the one guy that could actually help Cobra complete their project to summon Great Cthulhu's idiot cousin. So the potentially Earth-ending threat was unleashed only because General Hawk was too stupid to look at the mission reports from Flint and Lady J from last year's adventure. That, or he just wanted to make extra super double duper sure Cobra was doing the thing they were so obviously doing. You know, for the first time in a cartoon review, I'm upping the Hawk is a douche count. In conclusion, this was a great episode, though it does seem like it comes from Bizarro World. I mean, what with Cobra being competent and actually winning, and the Joes, or at least General Hawk, being complete idiots. Well, that's all. Happy Halloween, everybody, and have a wonderful night!